so many welcome and congratulations on your directorial debut. So thank exciting. You so, yeah, very exciting. Thank you so much. And, and, and it's a great seeing you again. And thank you for having me. Of course. But, you know, for um, La Soga Salvation, you not only uh, get to direct, but you're also one of the producers. You wrote the script and you're the star of the film. You know you can't hide from your past. Do I know you? And I know you. And I love your work. I encontrado. Yo sabía que te iba a ser muy complicado. I want you to do a little job. And you're going to do it, because if not, you'll never see her again. How did you manage all of that throughout the whole process? Well, do you, then it's, it was an amazing experience, I have to say. I would do it again if I have to. Um, um, how did I manage? I prepared myself uh, mentally and prepared myself on set prior to getting, uh, prior to shooting. Uh, I rehearsed for about a month with the actors and I also rehearsed with my DP and my crew. So when we got to the set, there was no question asked. We knew exactly what we wanted to do and the actors knew exactly what I wanted from them. So that really helped helped a lot, you know, yeah. in the process. And your character is so interesting because he's so flawed, and yet he's so uh, now that he's trying to go on the right path. He's he's so sensitive, and yet he still has that problem communicating. And then he gets dragged back into whatever he's dragged into. I'm not going to say because we don't want to <laughs> give it all away. But how did you come up with such a multi-layered character and, and what's the, the end of that? What do you want people to think about this man? Well, good question. The, this man is just a regular guy who's trying to get by, a regular guy who wants love in his life. And because of his past, because of what he did in his past, it's impossible for him to have love in his life. So when I wrote that, when I was writing the script, I was making sure that I hit those points. Also, as an actor, I was, I am so sick and tired of seeing the, the Hollywood, what Hollywood does to a Latino uh, uh, lead, or in this case, a sicario, where the sicario becomes bigger than life. This man is just a regular guy trying to get by. And, and I feel like that's what people connect to this character. And, uh, and, and I also wanted to make sure that, that the only love, the only pure character in this film was his love interest, which um, um, if, if you watch the film, when, when people do watch the film, everyone is dirty. Everyone is up to something except her. And I feel like she's also his conscious. So to me, it was very, when I was shooting, I made sure that with her, the camera did not move. But when she wasn't around, the camera was always moving, which is, his, which is him himself uh, dealing with his conscience and dealing with himself, with his demons, which is something that I wanted to uh, uh, show in the film. Wow, well, and you did. It was just so well written. And you write a lot about your community. You write about um, Latino characters and Dominican characters. And way before In the Heights gave uh, Washington mm -hmm. Heights like uh, space for people to know where it was and all about it. Your film in 2002, which again, you starred and also helped produce, Washington Heights put that neighborhood on the map and it was a critically acclaimed film and also a um, lot of film festival where you got a lot of praise and you're, you continue to write these stories that are so important. Tell us, why are they important to you? Well, like I said, I, I feel like as an actor, as a Latino actor, Hollywood has stereotyped me as what I can do because of the way I look. And I wanted to sort of change their perspective on me, what I am. So to me, writing, which is right there, I think everyone right there, which is uh, when I co-wrote Washington Heights and helped produce Washington Heights, I wanted to show them a different layer of what Manny Perez is. Uh, he's just a guy, Latino, uh, happens to be Latino, but he's just a regular, he's a human being. So to me, it's like I write these characters because I'm also trying to change my career in the career, the path of my career. So now I decided to direct, which is another step uh, that I was 
actually, it's a great experience, but I was not, I didn't know I could do, as you say. Um, but, but due to the fact that it was a low budget film and due to the fact that I didn't want to sit down with a director and explain to him how I write and how I write everything visual. So I'm, I decided to do it myself. Um, and that's how this whole thing came about. And you know, that's interesting because if you take um, uh, Ben Affleck and um, his writing partner for, um, what's his name? Uh, Damon? Matt, Matt Damon. No? Matt Damon. If you, if you take uh, Matt Damon and Ben Affleck and they wrote their first film and from there, that was like a launching pad. But exactly. the thing is that for Latinos, especially back then, that launching pad never happened. And now it's a little, little bit different. So I'm hoping that there's gonna be more attention uh, paid to the writing and to the, the execution of this film because this film really needs to be seen by, by, uh, by everyone. And to see your talent, that's always been there. So um, what do you have in store? Because I know you continue to create for the future. Yeah, I'm actually, I, I, couldn't, I wrote part three to this character, La Soga, and I sort of want to direct as well. Um, and I, you know, I, and I feel like in part three, it ends, his, his whole cycle, it, it, it makes, it, it ends there. Uh, um, he goes back to the Dominican Republic and he's trying to find justice in this crazy, corrupt, corrupted world. Um, but yeah, no, as, as an actor, I'm always, pushing myself to the next level. Um, and, and if I have to write so Hollywood can take notice of me, example, Matt Damon and, and Ben Affleck did it. Yeah, and it was a, a push for their career and they, it, they took off. With us, it's always a struggle. With us, I still feel like even though they're saying that Latinos are the hot item nowadays, it's not true. <laughs> it's not true. And I also feel, and I must say this, I've said this many times, that the problem with, with us, with Hollywood not seeing us as the hot item is because we're not supportive of Latinos uh, projects. Um, I feel like we're always criticizing a Latino project. If, if it's done in the West Coast, all of a sudden Puerto Ricans or Dominicans, Cubans won't see it because it's a Mexican thing. If it's done in the East Coast, Mexicans are like, well, that's a, that's a, a Caribbean thing. And I feel like once you come to this country, you are a Latino, you should just unite as one. And then if Hollywood sees that we go and support our project, they'll continue making more projects about us, for us. And, and I feel like that's the, the, the difference. It's, I feel like the problem is within, is within us as well. It's, it's so true. It's so true because we need to be supportive. And if you, maybe there's a film or a TV project that you don't like, and you're Latino and it's a Latino project, just if the best thing to do is just shut up. You don't exactly. have to diss it. But it's like we take social media and we go, I, I have a voice and I'm going to just say how horrible this was. Why do you have to do that? I think we should go with the adage of if you don't have anything nice, just don't say anything nice at all. Don't say anything exactly. at all. But uh, you're so right. And I think that we need to learn because look where it's gotten the African-American community. You see their projects all over the place and they're no longer even considered black projects. It's an all black cast, but it's just a rom-com. It's just an action movie. And if we need, if we want to get there, we have to do as the African-American community has done. So I totally- No, you're agree. right. I, I, I've said this many times and somehow I think our pride, you know, takes away from what we should cherish in front of us. So it's, it's a weird thing. But on a positive note, I think you've done a fantastic uh, uh, work with this film. And uh, the characters are so, it's like a character study. You know, the women characters, it's a, you have a very, very strong woman. Uh, mm -hmm. And then you have your, your girlfriend who is, who is a sweet, it's all but nice and sweetness. And then all the men are in between the really good and the really horrible. So there are no stereotypical characters here. There's always just a lot of levels with the characters and congratulations for that. No, thank you so much. Yeah, I, when I was writing, I also made sure that that was part of, of, of the development of every character, especially the women. I, I, I feel 
and I said this, and I told my mom that women are the goddess of this earth. Uh, and I, and I, and I, and so when I write, I want to make sure that they stand down, they have a voice as well. And I also wanted to represent the, the, the pureness of love compared to a female version of what La Soga was in part one, which is the villain in part in, in salvation. Well, thank you for that. Thank you for taking women into consideration when you write, especially Latina women. We don't get to see a lot of those strong women that uh, the villain is. Um, congratulations, really a wonderful um, film and an introspective film that we all need to take a look at. And uh, I wish you all the luck. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure talking to you again. Igualmente. Hasta luego. Cuídense.